Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. The transmission installation has been put on hold for just a little bit because of this. Under all this popcorn, there actually is something in here. Yay, a Dakota Digital Dash. I'm excited about this. So we have the main gauges and then we have the accessory gauges. This is the voltmeter. And then the temperature, so the, the coolant temperature and the oil pressure, which means I can get rid of my existing gauges. So I think I've dug through all the popcorn foam and I found the instructions and some wiring here. And we have the main brain, I guess, of the, the box. This is where all your wires are gonna go into. All right. And some sensors and other wiring harnesses from here. So uh, packed really nicely and uh, I'm excited to get this in. So let's get to work. So here's the rat's nest of wiring that's underneath the dash. We're going to you know, untangle it all, take out the cable ties and zip ties and whatever, label it up, redo it, you know, undo all these kind of deals. So uh, it gives us a good opportunity to make this look a lot better, which I'm certain I'm going to be able to do. So this should be fun. To disassemble the dash, you first need to pull the dash pad off, which is very simple to do. Uh, it's held together by just a few screws that are along the seam here. Uh, a couple in the glove box, right here and there. And then you just pry it out because it's held up by these little clips, which are easy to lose. So just make sure you're keeping an eye and an ear out. So if they fall down, you grab them and collect them. And uh, then you can move on to the dash itself. So to get the original gauges out, we first need to pull out the dash, and to do that, there's seven bolts that hold it together. We have one, two, three, four down there, five, six underneath here, and then there's one underneath the column itself. <clears throat> and obviously I've already pulled out the dash, and I'm just holding it all together. Um, with some wire right here just so if it falls down it's not gonna split the dash in two Okay So to get the original gauges out we first need to pull out the dash and to do that there's seven bolts holding it together We have one two three Four underneath, five, six underneath here, and then there is one above the column down there. Um, obviously I have my dash pulled out a bit, and I'm just hold using some wire right here just so if this side falls down, it's not going to fall down, and it won't crack my dash. So to get to the bolt that's above the column, you need to drop the column down. You just need to get a 916 socket. Pull them off, drop the column down, then you can pull the bolt out, and then I recommend putting the column back in place, but just hold it together by a few threads with these nuts, and then you can bring the dash forward and rest it on the column itself, and it gives you enough room to work behind the dash. So a quick tip, you want to remove the parking brake release handle, which is attached with this joint right here. Just pull this off, and then you can That'll allow the bottom of the dash to pull out a little bit more. So, good little tip. So this is the original dash. Uh, as you can see, it's very dirty. We're gonna have to disassemble it and clean up this panel right here. Also note, I have 
eight five miles on the the car. Uh, so to disassemble this, we will need to unbolt these little screws right there. So I think there's seven of them or something. Anyways, let's uh, take it apart there and then we can clean it up and attach the, the new Dakota digital dash to it. So I'm gonna be retaining the headlight switch and to pull this knob off, there's a little switch back here, a little push-in button. So extend this out to the max, push that, and out it comes. There we go. It seems I need to take this whole headlight switch out, so I just grabbed a pry bar which has a nice flat blade to it, and I can spin this out, I guess. There we go. We of course can't forget the knob for the clock. And just like that, it's off. So there we go. Let's wash this up and then we can work on getting the new one installed. With the original bezel all washed and cleaned, you can see how nice it looks compared to how it was at least. Not too bad. Uh, we can then put it together with the digital Dakota dash. Now, you'll notice these wires right here. That is gonna be my shift light, all right? And all I'm using is a slightly modified 194 connector, right? Which is, and I'm using a 194 LED bulb. And then to get this to work, I removed the original LED, as you can see how they slot in there. I removed the original one from the digital decoded dash so I can slot the wires through. Um, now the original one here is red. If you just plan on using that, go ahead. But uh, I decided to make my own. So let's put this together. We obviously have to take off the original, or the protective film. Make sure that the clear plastic in there is as clean as possible and dust free because you don't want that showing up on the gauges once it's all put together. And now we can screw it together with the supplied screws. And there it is, looks great. Can't wait to get it into the car, but I got a lot of wiring to do. So really quickly, I just wanted to show you a few extra things I bought. Since I'm basically doing a rewire, I bought this transition block to go underneath the hood. I can run this straight off the battery and put all my major accessories from here. This ground block is gonna go underneath the dash. Uh, so one main ground that comes from the chassis and then I can put all other accessory uh, grounds to that. And then this painless multi-circuit fuse box. Uh, again, it's gonna go underneath the dash. It is, uh, has a relay, uh, four ports off the ignition switch, and then three ports that are hot all the time. Uh, again, this will allow me to add accessories or whatnot all straight from the dash. And it's fused. So, lots of wiring, time to get to work. So I have my main battery junction block right here. We can now hook up our cables. And when you have connections that are potentially exposed to the elements, I highly recommend a little dielectric grease. Just a little squirt on there. Uh, just to keep it protected from getting corroded. This is the little circuit breaker that came in the painless kit. This is the wire that feeds to the battery and that wire feeds to the painless circuit breaker in the car. Really quick, I just wanted to show the brackets that I designed in AutoCAD and cut out of aluminum. This is for the control box. So it's gonna mount like so. 
All right. And then this one is for the painless wiring circuit that's going to go here. And then this section is for the my grounds. That can go like so. And then to elevate this off the chassis a bit, I'm going to take some quarter inch rubber fuel line, cut it into half inch chunks, and that will bring these bra brackets up a little bit and allow for the wiring to go underneath them. So that's the plan. So I have to use my phone for this part, but as for the wiring of the Dakota Digital Dash, this is the main harness right here that feeds into the original PCB. All I did was just cut a few wires to like your uh, uh, signal lights, high beams, etc. I labeled everything, uh, you know, just to make it easier for me. And then run your wires across. I, as you saw, mount, mounted my brain, ECU, whatever, to the top of my glove box. Then you just plug in your wires where it tells you to put them, screw it in, and you're done. So pretty simple. Read the instructions. They're very, very good. I'm not completely done with, you know, wrapping these all up, but uh, it gets it out of the way for now, and I can continue on. So I have most of the wiring done. This is the painless system right here that has three circuits for always hot, uh, four circuits for ignition hot, and I added this little junction block here that has four ports that are connected to my accessory port so uh, and then obviously we got grounds down here uh, a lot of wiring because I ripped out virtually everything and redid it but uh, we are now at a point where we can put back the dash so I need to put in the new water temperature sensor and before I do that I need to pull out the old analog one and before you do just put some towels around the sensor because there is coolant in there and it's just gonna leak all over And again, maybe it won't leak all over the place. Now the kit comes with a whole assortment of adapters, so this should be able to fit in any kind of coolant port that you have. I always use a little thread sealant and aviation former gasket just to make sure it doesn't leak. Now this one has a little crush washer, so I put it on and as well as a little aviation former gasket. That's not good. So a huge shout out to Dakota Digital as when I told them about the broken sensor, they immediately sent me up a new one free of charge. And there we go, that is now installed. We can just simply wrap that, something like that, we'll figure it out. So that's the dash installed. I think it looks great. The little yellow dot is my shift light. Not a big fan of the lens cover, but it's just cut out of some, like a plastic divider. Um, the trimming around the dash, I used a Krylon silver leafing pen, and that made a really nice difference just to kind of restore that. Uh, if you live in Canada, good luck finding them. It's not that easy. Uh, I can't fire it up. I can't turn it on, which I know is gonna piss a lot of people off, but, um, I still need to do my speed sensor and wire up the momentary switches, which I plan to put in my console, which as you can see, no transmission or console. So that's going to have to come in a later video, which uh, will come down the line. If you want to see that, please subscribe. And as usual, thanks for watching.